Hey guys, Kitty Gear here, and today I have a video or tips. Turn that off. AC off. I anyway, have some tips for you on upgrading your operating system. Now, um, there's a lot of, or, uh, there's been two major releases uh, recently with the operating system world. I guess there's Windows 7, which was just released officially. Uh, you know, Microsoft officially released that, so you can pick that up, or you can also take a route and look at OS 10, or even the more, I guess. Uh, geeky route would be Linux, or not even, I guess, non-geeks can also check that out, but uh, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, so you have your Snow Leopard, which has also been officially released, 9.10 for Ubuntu, I believe, is uh, in beta, I think, and uh, you have Windows 7, which has also been officially released. Um, all offer their own pros and cons, I know a lot of the heavy one talked about recently, Windows 7. Now, I know a majority of you users that I, uh, you know, are subscribers of mine are on Windows um, and it's, I would say now it's time to upgrade. Uh, whether it be on XP, I've been, I was on XP and I migrated to Windows 7, the RC candidate, and I've been on the release candidate for a while. I got my uh, student edition of Windows 7 coming in, so that's awesome. And, um, you know, some of you may have used XP, some of you may be on Vista, I use both. I have XP, I used to have XP on here and I had Vista on my laptop. Um, you know, Vista was really a resource hog, and it being on my one gig of RAM on my laptop, you know, it was pretty slow every now and then when I ran a lot of applications. I gotta say, with Windows 7, uh, it really utilizes the RAM use, CPU usage, uh, cuts it down, you know, compared to Vista. Everything runs more faster, stabler, and more efficient, and there's some, you know, okay new features. I don't use, like, a lot of them, like the whole arrow peak and stuff like that, but I know a lot of you may be, in, be into the aesthetics type stuff. And on the other side, there's um, Snow Leopard, which has a lot of more, it's not a whole full OS upgrade, it's more of a, uh, uh, oh, it is an upgrade, but it's not like a whole new OS. It has the same, pretty much, same GUI, some minor changes and some major changes in terms of the utilization of hardware, uh, really takes more advantage of that. Uh, much more faster operating system overall, and this is what uh, Snow Leopard did. And again, a stabler operating system, but OS X is pretty stable by itself. So it's a, you know, step up from Leopard, obviously. Uh, and you are going to see some, with any operating system, whether it be Windows 7 or Snow Leopard, you're always going to have, uh, again, your cons, which would be, you know, there's going to be some software uh, problems every now and then because it's not, you know, some developers don't get ready for that new operating system coming out. I know there's some problems with that on Snow Leopard uh, where, like, some applications won't work right away. Um, there's also been uh, problems also on drivers on Windows sometimes, and that was a big one on Windows Vista, but the thing is with Windows 7, a lot of people have been testing out the release candidate, it was a huge thousand, numbers in the thousands, I believe, uh, that Balmer said that beta tested Windows 7 and they got the feedback, so it's not going to be a major problem that they had with Vista, but um, most of the bugs they got within fixing within the release candidate, so that's a good thing. Um, so, now, this, there's also Ubuntu, like I said, if you want to try the Linux route, uh, there's a lot of software is, uh, over there, too, and you can also emulate Windows software with, like, Wine and stuff like that. So, I mean, if you think you're going to really need those Windows applications or, you know, some OS ten tools, there's some really, really awesome tools on Linux, really geeky tools that you can check out. It is a little more complicated, I guess, for the common user than, let's say, OS ten would be, but it is a really also another great alternative, and it is free. So it's, you know, comparing that to Snow Leopard or Windows 7, that's a pro within itself. Um, now some advantages you can take of, uh, up on. Now if you're on Snow Leopard, I believe it was only 25 bucks to upgrade to Snow Leopard. Not a big deal. On Windows XP, or Windows 7, there's a couple prices depending on what you want to get, the upgrade version, stuff like that. That runs you, you know, anywhere from, uh, whatever, you know, can run you from 100 and up, or, you know, I think, what is the upgrade version, like 80, 70, or maybe it's 100. But the big deal I want to talk about... Uh, is the one I took advantage of. If you have a, fr a friend, family, or anybody you know, a parent who is an alumni, and they still have their student address or email, edu email, um, they can go for the student deal, um, especially if they have, you know, sibling in college. win741.com, that's W-I-N-741, that'll be in the link over there, I believe. Yeah, I think I got it right. Um, Win741, you can take an advantage of a $30, yes, $30 Windows 7 Student Edition, and that, I think that comes bundled with, you know, Office 2007 type stuff. Uh, but I think, I don't know if you have to register it from there, but uh, it is Student Edition, so it has your main needed features. You really don't need, I think Ultimate really just includes uh, stuff like the BitLocker encryption, stuff like that, that where in, in Vista, you know, in Vista you got those little extra features for Ultimate, but nothing huge. Um, um, 
other than it being, you know, you can get a 64-bit version, but the student edition for your basic needs and stuff like that, that will do you fine. And again, it's $30, so it's awesome. So you can check that out. And there's also a good blog post written by Paul Thoreau at winsupersite.com where you don't even need to get the upgrade version, or I think you can use the uh, upgrade version to get the full features of Windows 7. There's a really cool thing he wrote. It's a little bit complicated, some cool steps to follow, but um, basically it's like something where you, when you install, you don't use the product key until later on. It's some trick that gets Windows to get you the uh, full version if you buy the upgraded version, or something like that. Uh, I'll leave the link to that uh, blog post by Paul Thoreau. It's like at winsupersite.com, but I'll leave the direct blog post link if you want to check that out and you're interested. Um, I'll be doing an unboxing when I get Windows 7. Uh, obviously it is $30, so it's a cheap deal, and I'll be upgrading that. I'll be installing that actually on my uh, SSD over here, so this is the Intel X25M SSD that I have not used as of late, so I'll be installing Windows 7 on there. Um, so yeah. Now, um, some things, like I said, to take in consideration. Um, I mentioned, obviously, the software problems, but you also want to back up your, because uh, you have to do a clean install. I recommend you do a clean install. Um, you, you may want to back up important documents, that type of stuff is okay, but in terms of applications, you can always reinstall those. You can probably get the product keys for applications you've bought, in. so no need to back those up. You want to start a fresh slate. You, like Again, you may need those certain documents that are really important. You can back those up to an external hard drive. You can even use the Windows transfer settings if you really want to. But again, I recommend for the applications, leave those behind and install them clean when you get to uh, Windows 7. So back up. Uh, you may want to take the compatibility test to see if you're, or you know, the upgrade advisor to see if your computer or your hardware can handle 2007, or Windows 7, uh, which, uh, for the most part, netbooks, lo oh, lower end PCs, it can run it fine with around 1 gig of RAM, uh, stable at least. Um, you know, when two th if you're anywhere from Windows 2007 and up, all the way up to Vista, I would recommend you upgrade to 7 unless you like where you're at, you like how uh, XP runs for you, or maybe you share the computer with your family and you know they may not be used to the whole jump from Windows XP or Windows 2000 to Windows 7 you know talk it over if it's a shared computer um, you may also want to take advantage of those like family pack deals I don't know if there's a Windows 7 family pack edition I know Leopard uh, or Mac or send they do really good deals on that where you can get like install it up to three computers and uh, that's a you know, really really good deal or even more than three computers I think but um, whatever OS you pick, uh, just know that there's a lot of options for you. There's Linux, there's Mac OS X. If you you know if you're going to be upgrading your whole computer, you know if you're going to be ditching your uh, clean install of XP and uh, moving to whole other operating system, uh, you could. I mean, it's not. Uh, I guess it's not ideal for people to go out there and buy a whole new computer uh, where they can just upgrade Windows 7. But you know, some people are buying new computers for Windows 7, and some people may be upgrading to Mac. I mean, it's a choice up to you. I'm not going to tell you which or which one not to download, because I, per I, you know, like all three of them, Linux, Windows, and OS 10. Anyway, guys, those are my tips. Uh, take them all into consideration, and all my links that I mentioned will be in the video description to the right. What will you be doing? Will you be upgrading to Windows 7, upgrading to Mac, maybe switching to Linux? Um, I'm also going to leave the blog post I made on a community poll to see what everybody's upgrading to. So you can submit your comments in that in the link to your right, in the right, and I'll uh, put you up there in the poll. So check it out. See you guys later. Oh, comment, rate, subscribe.